There is something peculiar about the transition metals, particularly in the electronic configuration which they have and how ionization occur. The electronic configuration of the first transition series is like this. Now we have learned so far, 4s orbital has less energy than 3d orbital and so 4s orbital is filled up before 3d orbital. While ionization, the electron is lost from the orbital having highest energy and that is obviously the 4s orbital and not the 3d orbital. Here is the confusion. Here we say that 3d orbital has higher energy and while ionization, we say that 4s orbital has a higher energy. Now both the arguments cannot be true at the same time. Before you get totally confused, let me quickly give you two vital points which will definitely help you to overcome all the doubts that you have in your mind. The energy of the orbital depend on the nuclear charge as well as the shielding of electrons. The energy of 3d and 4s orbital are very close to each other not going into the argument which is greater for the time being. Now, let me come to the main point. I will fill up electrons in the first element potassium of the fourth period. It has 19 protons. The filling up of first 18 electrons just follow the same rule which we followed in the case of argon. Now, the 19th electron will go to 4s. As you all know that 4s energy is lower than 3d. Now let me take the example of calcium. One proton has increased. It is now 20. Now see that the energy between 3d and 4s orbital has decreased considerably, but still the 4s is lower than 3d, so it is filled up before 3d. Now for the next element, scandium, the number of protons is 21. And what happens to the energy of 3d orbital? It becomes less than 4s. So the 19th electron will go to 3d orbital and not the 4s orbital. After this, the energy of 4s orbital come more close to 3d orbital. This is due to introduction of the 3d electron which shields the 4s level from the protons. The 20th electron after entering the 3d orbital experiences a force of repulsion from this electron. This force exceeds the very small difference of energy between 3d and 4s and is therefore pushed to the 4s level. The next electron will go to the 4s level due to the same reason. Since the last electron go to the 4s level, therefore while ionization, the 4s electron will go out first. For titanium, there are 22 protons. These 22 protons bring down the 3d orbital energy below 4s orbital energy. The lowering of 3d orbital will be more than was in the case of scandium because now 22 protons are there instead of 21. The 19th and the 20th electron go to the 3d level each time energy of 4s get reduced due to increase in shielding electron. After filling up of the 20th electron, 4s orbital come very close to 3d orbital energy and the 21st and 22nd electron are pushed to the 4s level as was in the case of scandium. This is more or less the explanation behind the filling up of all the 10 d block elements of the fourth period. The logic of half filled and fully filled orbital in chromium and copper which you have been taught until now doesn't actually work like that. That doesn't mean that stability of half filled and fully filled orbital is not true. It is true. But during filling up of electrons in chromium and copper, this stability factor does not come into play. This can be confirmed by seeing the electronic configuration of elements like niobium, ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, tungsten, platinum and seaborgium, which is not matching with the elements of the same group in the fourth period.